What's up, guys? I am Caleb. I am Keith. And I'm Jack. <laughs> and if I look a little flush today, it's because I just got done with a run because my uh, time management is still off. We're just going to go with that. Uh, and today, guys, <laughs> we, have, uh, we, have a, we have a couple of interesting topics to talk about, don't we? Uh, oh, it's <laughs> Bigly mad is the world. <laughs> <laughs> would you guys want to start with the leaked uh not ban on pistol braces that sort of bans pistol braces or do we want to start with washington doing washington state doing washington state things oh god let's start with the sbr yeah let, let's do sbrs first you mean not sbrs you mean not pistol not braces SBR. which are about what to be totally SBRs. SBRs. yeah let's 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 uh one i i've probably owned a dozen rifle caliber caliber pistols with a brace on them in the last how long have they been out 10 years close to that something yeah. like yeah, that yeah somewhere around there the eight that, to 10 that years. feel 2011 2012 feels yeah, like when that's, they that, first that, did the, the brace like i had i had a, a gen one brace and i was like one of the first guys in my circles to have one they were like oh this thing's crazy and i'm like i think it works <laughs> <And> they're <laughs> like what whatever um i couldn't think of one configuration using that metric that doesn't have four points one like if you had like an og sb15 that's not collapsible and it's mounted on a pistol buffer tube with no extenders and you don't have a forward hand stop and you just put a red dot on it that's the one that's it. And, that and, is... if the red, and if the red dot's like on like low mounted on the rail and not at like regular AR height, I think that works. Yeah. Yeah. Was... I think you could get away with it at regular AR height because you could sort of prove that you can still extend it and all of that. But basically, yeah, the only one I can think of is, I mean, as much, hang on, I'm about to make people big mad. The only configuration that I can think of is using the SP15 exactly as it was designed to be used. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, we all it, no interpretation. <laughs> Look, uh, can we Here's talk the about? Thing. We all knew what this was. Like yeah, everybody we... was like, "Guys, this was this was assuredly when we first saw it." Like, oh, we know what this is. We just don't have to say it out loud. It was it was <laughs> from the best period of Sig Sauer's life as a company, in my opinion, where they were just <laughs> putting stuff out there like. Dare us not to. It was like, like do y'all remember the give a fuck? Yeah, do y'all remember the muzzle device that they had at Shot Show one year that they were like, yo, that is the exact same diameter as the average PVC pipe you would find. And it also and it, to and look it, exactly it, like suppressor. The they're like, this convenient, commonly threaded hollow tube goes over top of this like this, but this has a serial number and is a silencer. They released that at Shot Show and just we all stood there horrified. Like, you can't do this. And the ATF is like, you, mm, you really shouldn't do this. And they're like, well, we didn't. I, I honestly think it was like a stare off on like either we're going to like do some really sketch stuff or you're going to give us all the government contracts. One of the two. <laughs> and look so, yeah. where we are now. Right. <laughs> look, look at that. We're in the money. That big dot gov money. Um, but how many <laughs> millions of these things I worked at a gun counter. We've all worked at a gun counter while braces were being sold. Right. Yep. Oh yeah. If I remember everybody's work history, right. I sold over a hundred easily. I also sold easily that many. <laughs> I couldn't even not... tell you how many I sold. Cause I would have to figure out like how many guns I sold with them. How many I sold set. Like, Oh, I'm not talking about sold separately. I'm talking about somebody came in. I want an AR-15. I like that short one with, and I'm like, that's a brace. This is how it's supposed to be used. Good luck figuring everything out. Yep. 100 plus easily. And of those people, maybe 20 or so are going to become aware of this regulation change and the rest are going to become felons. I mean, I'm predicting I, if you guys, if the ATF thought there was mass non-compliance to the bump stock ban, what do you think is going to happen with this? Because here's what's going to happen. The smart, no one is going to, 
And I mean, I hate to say this, but like no one who has these guns is going to change the configuration of their guns. They're just going to stop posting about if they're smart, they're going to stop posting about them on Instagram. And if they take them to like classes or stuff like that, it's going to be a everybody be cool moment and everyone's going to be cool. Like this, this gets into the whole dynamic of you should, you should never issue an order or make a rule that there's in it's impossible to enforce you right. can't enforce it there will be mass non-compliance because a it undermines the hell out of you and makes everyone think that oh you're just dumb why are you doing this and it it's just man I found this a video is, of this myself not, from this 2014 go well. so just to give people an idea of how long these been around for i have a video of myself from 2014 with an original sb15 brace and of course, I'm shouldering it because crimes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so these have been around since I think a couple of years before that. And to Keith's point, no one like this is a like these are just going to be guns that go into the closet now or and I you have to think that somebody thought about it or somebody at the ATF. I hope somebody in the room at ATF was smart enough to go, hey, if we're just making these guns into SBRs, what's going to stop people from just yoinking these things off and putting a stock on them and then just leaving them in their closet anyways? And like not, you know, like, again, don't be a fucking narc. The, uh, the uh, I'm not advocating illegal behavior, by the way. Just let's no, yeah. no crimes, guys. But, but I know people who if you know if this goes through if this ban does go they're gonna be like all right cool this brace isn't as great as stock anyways and then it's already an sbr might as well just fully sbr it and not pay the tax stamp fuck the man the the amount of non-compliance from the a like deliberate non-compliance because it's a dumb rule but b just the amount of non-compliance because people aren't gonna know like jack pointed out 80 percent of people who have these things are not going to hear about these this rule change or are going to hear about it like way after the fact and be like well i've i've had this for three years when did that change bro i i had i sold so many like if someone came in and said i want a home defense weapon i trained the salesman to basically like ar pistol mid-tier red dot streamlight tlr1 we assembled the whole thing right there for them like here you go have a good day and they walked off and like those are sitting everywhere i look at how many i see more braces on ig shooters pages than i see stocks and i'm willing to bet a lot of those people don't like again to your point aren't aware of this change uh now i have a parallel question though does this mean that the people in the know are going to go back to shooting their rifle caliber pistols jammed out against the slings. And we're, we're going back to the SAS days. Is it Draco season? <laughs> so when, when we started looking up, like when, when this was happening, I looked up like, Hey, I just typed in brace and started looking through my photos and everything. Um, in 2014, I was running it the way we all ran it. And then at 2016, there's a picture of a red special that I apparently built in a fever pitch where it, I built this thing to run out on the sling. So ahead of the time, back to the SAS. Let's go back. <laughs> Prin yeah. Princess Gate. <laughs> sling tension method, go. I mean, I am going to buy a, I might as well just, I, I've been, I never bought an AK pistol as much as I love them, but now I might as well, might as well get a single point and just jam that thing out there, baby. Right. Yeah, if you don't own a Draco, you should. They are the funnest gun to annoy literally everyone at the range with. I feel like my Draco season passed when I left Miami, right? Like if there was one place <laughs> in the world where I could have just bought a Draco and rolled around with it in my car, that was the place. <laughs> oh, good times. I've got my the uh, one props to Century. Century brought one of the greatest products ever to the market the Draco. If you want to talk about culturally impacting guns, you're going to have to be like, well, the 1911, the M1 Garand, the AR-15, the Glock handgun, and the Draco. 
Yep. <laughs> I I remember being at a club in 2015, 2016, because uh, I still did things like that when I was young. Um, and there was a guy with a shirt that like in weird font that was like Draco or better. Hmm. I'm confused. Draco or better? Draco or better was a statement going around ATL at the time that if you had a gun, it better be a Draco or better. Otherwise, ah. I'm not I'm not impressed. <laughs> we had a uh, when I was running the gun shop down in South Florida, we had a local rapper kind of make it big. And of course, he was uh, he had a Draco in his music video. And for about two weeks, I I would order probably 20 a week and they would be gone. Just, I couldn't keep them in stock. And it didn't even matter if it was a Draco, if it was a pistol AK, like out the doors, gone. just gone. It, gone. It, it's kind of just the parlance for any short barrel gun. It, in the people that like, yeah. it's almost become like Velcro. <laughs> like <laughs> you're supposed to say hook and loop fastener. But I've, I've had met up with guys I'm like, yeah, I got a Draco. And I'm like, that's a, that's a SIG. Like, it's, yeah. it's, not, a, it's not even close to a Draco. I'm First like, off, where'd you get a SIG 552? Secondly. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, first off, only tell me where I can go get one. Two. <laughs> oh, man. You know, it is funny because there are some guns that have become, or words for guns that have become in, you know, if you look at the gun culture that exists outside of what most of us would recognize as gun culture. And that's something Jack understands that Keith understands that I understand. There are going to be people who are listening to this who go, what the hell's Caleb talking about? It's gun owners that don't look like us. That's right. what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and there is a unique gun culture that exists in that demographic. Uh, and you know, I would sell guns. They would refer to, I would have guys come in and they would be like, can I get a Glock? And I would show them a Glock and they'd be like, no, not that Glock, that Glock. And they would point to like an M and P or something. And I'm like, all right, homie. Yeah. I'll sell you. And I was a gun snob about that for about two seconds until I realized that they are in my store to buy things. And you know what? Yeah, here you go. Here's your Glock, dude. I don't give a shit what you want to call this thing. Is your money green? Is it curiously wadded up fives and ones? Whatever. You know, uh, I had old timers be like, that's not a 1911. That's a model 70 or Mark, whatever. And I'm like, man, that's, that's just stupid. That's just a 1911. I, I'm, I, like, I'm sorry you're expending this much effort being pedantic, but it must be fun for you. I've stopped caring if they else. call it a clip. What a, what, yeah. a, what a waste of my life it was carrying oh, whoever someone's a clip. If I, I, I actually corrected employees because people would ask for extended clips and I would have employees be like, it's a magazine. And I said, Hey, you shut the fuck up. You sell this man, his stendo at a 50% markup and you smile about it. Yeah. You don't, yeah. You, you're not, you're not here. If someone says, what is this? You can say what it is. You're not here to make anyone feel bad. You're here to service a need. This is why I'm going to go on one of my favorite tangents real quick. We yes. need a ranking system in the gun world. Yes. I, whatever, whatever, like there should be a test. It should be knowledge based and skill based. And it's the same across the board. It's evenly graded, but it's on a bell curve and it's a one to 100. And if you are higher than the person on this side, they don't get to talk to you. Like, let's say universally, if I walk into a gun store and I pull out one of these cards and I have 65 on it, I'm allowed to walk behind the counter, take down anything I want, look at it, put it back, handle some other stuff, and then decide what I want. I shouldn't have to talk to anybody. But at 100, it's Jerry Micklick, and we just all leave the store and let him do whatever he wants to do. He just walks in. He leaves <laughs> money on the counter. Walks, walks in. Out. Nobody, nobody's allowed to make eye contact. You must avert your eyes. Right. And like, And I'm not saying this is for everyone. I'm saying this is for people in the gun industry. Because I don't need a 15 behind the gun counter telling me a dude in my mid-50s, like, what's up? Yeah. Uh, interestingly, uh, back when he was alive, Todd would actually do that to people. So <laughs> I was out to dinner with Todd after one of his classes. And somebody in the class started, like, trying to correct somebody else. And Todd goes, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
he shot the fast faster than you. So you shut the hell up. He wins. <laughs> you don't get to tell him anything. It was, oh, it was beautiful. Um, to kind of try to get us back on track, speaking of things that are going to have mass non-compliance, uh, let's move our eyes to the state of Washington, where the Washington State Senate passed a uh, high standard, whatever, don't get mad at me. I'm going to call them high cap mags. That's what everybody calls them. Whatever. Shut up, internet. It, it's the name of the legislature, guys. Don't, yeah. don't be mad about it. So they passed, they, a, high they passed a ban on mags over that hold more than 10 rounds. Um, I will be very upfront. I haven't read the bill. And the reason I haven't read the bill is I just don't care anymore. All of these bills are the fucking same, and they're all pointless and stupid to do nothing to reduce crime. Well, okay. I'm going to argue with you there for just one second. They're not all the same. Fair. Hold on. And this is important. This is important to me. Um, and it's going to go back to the SBR ban. Well, the SB, the brace ban. Uh, when I read that, I realized we were no longer dealing with people who think a barrel shroud is a shoulder thing that goes up. No, the brace ban was written by people who understand exactly what the fuck is going on. It was written by the ATF's tech branch. And they were like, hmm, these guys are yeah, some, like, these- like they, they know. They're selecting the right words. They're they're picking things out. So it's going to get a lot harder to, you know, juke and jive it. That's that's my only point. But you're right. Like anything that mostly happens at the state level, it, what are they saying? High capacity mags prevent crime. It's the dumbest statement I've ever heard. <laughs> it it's it, you're you're throwing prohibition back into the ring here. And we have a great history of success with that, especially with all the cutouts and caveats and ways around it. Um, we're we're back to don't don't produce don't produce rules that are stupid, easy to break, like even even unintentionally. How many people are going to unintentionally violate the uh, the SBR change when braces go away and they get the point system? How many people are going to be unintentionally because they just didn't hear about it? Uh, b- violating the mag capacity ban. You have California right now. There, there are people in California who, when training classes happen or anything like that, they just trot out the high cap mags because they understand how dumb this is, and they're just like, "We're we're not going to deal with it. We're we're they're going to be there's too much going on. We're not going to deal with it. Here's the high cap mags. Please give them back. We are the law enforcement agency supplying you with the high cap magazines." We would like these back because compliance rules and reasons. We know it's dumb. So I did just look at the Washington statute and it's actually extra dumb Um, because under the Washington statute, you're not prohibited to possess your 30 rounders, your your 15 rounders, whatever, your 11 rounders. Uh, But the prohibition is specifically on the sale and the manufacture of said magazines. So... There's nothing in there. And do you guys remember the Colorado end around where people were just selling repair kits and yes. they still yeah. do sell repair kits in Colorado? Like they're just going to end up with people being like, oh, I have a, da- a magazine Rem- repair remember- kit and it's a fully functional P mag just taken apart. Remember when uh, when uh, weed was being mm-hmm. more legalized and you couldn't sell weed, but it was not illegal in any way to give away? Like you could straight up give away weed. So they would sell CDs or art or a hat or anything like that. And there would just be bonus weed. Now it's going to be magazines. Yeah. It's weed. <laughs> uh, that reminds me of the Halloween meme. Parents, no one is giving your children drugs. No free. one's giving your children no, drugs. No, they're going to give them PMAX. That's what's yeah. going to happen. I'm gonna I'm gonna fly to Washington with a thousand P mags and give it away as candy. I'm just gonna stuff it with like a bunch of Mike and Ikes and just hand <laughs> it out at Halloween. Here you hey, go, kiddos. I got hey, I got friends in Washington. I'm just saying <laughs> we, can, we can make this happen. Uh, but can you imagine so, a, a, a P mag stuffed with Smarties? <laughs> I feel like that's something that Tom like a, Kelly would do. So those those short smarties or or a, the short lifesaver rings and just stacked in there like like Pez. <laughs> no, officer, this isn't my high capacity magazine for this, this is, is my high can- capacity candy magazine. <laughs> this is a this is an advanced tactical Pez. <laughs> oh my lord! So. Uh, for the people who are in Washington and wondering what to do, there's some good news. This still hasn't passed your state house yet. Uh, your state house full of communists, 
which is unfortunate, but this hasn't passed your House of Representatives yet. So now is the time to make phone calls, to write letters, be nice, don't call people, don't, don't do what I just did and call them communists. I don't live in Washington, so it's not my problem in the sense that I can't do anything to affect it. It is my problem in the sense that any sort of state level magazine ban serves as a blueprint for other ones, but call your reps, write your reps, tell them, hey man, this is jacked up, you know, we don't support this, blah, 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 blah. Uh, if you live east of the Cascade Mountains, they'll probably listen to you. If you live west of the Cascade Mountains, go with God. Sorry. Good luck, guys. Out there where yeah, the sorry, is. Seattle, Seattle, not going to listen. <laughs> no, and it's unfortunate because, you know... It's tough. It, it, Washington has a really vibrant gun culture. It has one of the most interesting gun cultures I've ever been a part of because I used to li live there. And this has been one of those things where they have tried it every year for the past, I want to say seven years to get this through the house and really good street level activism has defeated it for the past seven years. And what they did this year was they kind of sidestepped the committee. They used it they used a legislative end run to get this to the floor for a floor vote where they knew it would pass. Hence why it passed through the Senate. Now, again, it doesn't have as good a chance to get through the house of representatives. So again, call your reps guys, like get them on the phone, be like, Hey, what the hell, but not, Hey, what the hell, you know, something nicer than that. But there's still a chance this doesn't go anywhere, that this doesn't make it out of the house, but it's definitely going to pass if you guys just give up. So do two things. Call your reps, stock up on mags. Buy those mags. Buy them, buy them, buy them. It's always a good time to buy magazines. Hey, isn't Aero Precision still one of our sponsors? Aero Precision is one of our sponsors. And they're selling hella mags right now, guys. So, yep. you know, <laughs> Aero Precision out there doing the Lord's work out of Washington. And they're just good guys. They are. They're good guys. Like and they make a nice PCC too. They, they make a they make a bunch of stuff. I don't I don't have a, an AR without Aero parts in it or on it somewhere in there. No, I don't. I don't think I do either, including factory guns that I put arrow parts in. <laughs> you know, I just realized that because of this whole brace thing, I might as well just throw that brace back. I've got a, I think, five and a half oh. inch arrow nine mil upper. I just need a lower receiver and just throw that brace that I've got sitting in my closet on there, and you know, lick the stamp and send it. Call the cops. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, the big mad episode, guys. It's been real. Yeah, I mean, and I, I'd like to put a happy bow on this, but it's to, you know, Washington, call your call your legislators, do what you can. Uh, and I will I will put this bow on it. The brace ruling hasn't actually come out yet. We have we don't all know the bridge. We, yeah, we, we have, have leaked documents. Bridge but we don't have anything official from ATF about whether or not they're going to actually put this ruling into place. Uh, it could happen tomorrow. It could not happen at all. They could see the whole internet getting big mad about it and be like, hmm, maybe we should have listened to the 25,000 comments we got on our public thing telling us how stupid this was. I guess we'll see. So, you know, tune in next week for more adventures in... What's the ATF going to do tomorrow? What's the plan now? <laughs> How am I a felon today without realizing it? Right? Yeah. Every morning I wake so up and I go, felony. did I commit any felonies today? Uh, not on purpose. So. It is It is Friday for us now recording it. Sorry to ruin the illusion to everyone that we record these ahead of time. Uh, so it is casual felony Friday. Casual felony Friday. All right, casual guys. unintentional felony Friday. Yeah, casual unintentional felony Friday. Casual yeah. intentional felony is a completely different Friday. Yeah, no, don't do those. Don't do those. Those are a terrible idea. My lawyer is very clear on that. <laughs> no crimes, guys. All right, remember, no intentional crimes. Just accidental, unintentional ones that you probably won't get caught doing, like having an SBR in your closet that you never show on the internet. Yeah, if you don't do anything on Instagram, it's really, really hard. Yeah, again, the, we're the, not saying whole, do that because that is a crime. Uh, no, no, so, we're discussing that like theoretically. It is the, funny, the like, whole if it isn't on Instagram, it didn't happen is very real. <laughs> so, and here's also, the thing that is true: the 
illegal possession of a short barrel of an unregistered short barrel rifle or whatever of an unregistered NFA item is almost all is 99% of the time is a tack on charge to some other crime that that person committed with said unregistered NFA item, unless your name happened to be Randy Weaver, in which case, different story. You know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to. We <laughs> we're coming up on episode time, but one day we're going to, we're going to talk about that case. And I'm going to just, Woo! <laughs> oh, it's it, there's, there's so uh, you know yeah. Well, let's save that for later. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Uh, thanks everybody for watching, listening, sharing, liking, subscribing, uh, telling your leaving really we we had some really weird comments this last week. I loved them. Um, so thank you everybody. Make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, share this with your friends if you like it, and share it with people that you hate if you don't like it. And we will be back next week with another episode.